Hello, everyone. This is Eli. I'm joined here by Rigby. Thank you so much for your performance. That was wonderful. I had a great time listening to it, as did everyone else in here. Uh, how you feeling? How was that for you? I, I mean, I'm feeling good. I knocked something over at the end, so feeling a little bad about that, but nothing broke. Oh, so I think overall. it's I, I think it's on brand. Okay. Think, yeah. yeah. You know what? It it is. Yeah. <laughs> if something didn't get knocked over, was it really a performance? No. I would totally agree with that. Um, as we begin here, can we all just go through, say your name and your instrument, please, and your pronouns, if you would like to. Uh, I'm Faye, she, they, play guitar. Uh, I'm Maud, I sing and play bass, they, them. Hannah, I also sing and play bass, uh, she, her. I'm Kean, and I hit the drums really hard, he, him. Indeed you do, I like that. Okay, um, so I'm going to go right back to the beginning for you guys here. You, you, you formed on April 20th of 2019, is that correct? Yes, indeed. That's great. So as, as the legend goes, you guys came together as um, a punk cover band for, it was like a last minute thing at the garage, is that correct? Yeah, it was, a, a, the show was called Pop Punk Sucks, which <laughs> I assumed meant that you came in and did like a classic punk cover. Because I was like, yeah, pop punk sucks. But yeah. then it turns out everyone else was covering pop punk bands, and we were there playing Babes in Toyland. <laughs> what, what were the pop punk bands? That, that, do you remember any other ones? Like Green Day, yeah. <laughs> and Jimmy Eats World. Oh, yeah, Jimmy Eats World. That was, that was pretty awesome. good. Well, that's good that you came in with the, the Minnesota native group, um, you know, that yeah. Minnesota representation. We're big. That's kind of what one thing that brought us together originally is we're big Babes in Toyland fans. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Um, so what, what draws you to punk, all of you guys? What, wh why, do you, why do you play this music? That's a good question. Um, I think it's just like kind of like a dare to be different thing. Yeah. Like punk rock has always been about just like doing your own thing um, and, and just doing something that you think is really cool or really interesting and something that, that you want to try to move other people with. Um, so, yeah. Totally. I think punk music is a good outlet. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of things to be angry about, and it's a good way to release all that anger on stage and with other people. So, I mean, I feel like that's what draws me to punk. Yeah, I, I definitely think that, especially as, you know, I saw it, like, with Hannah and I coming into it as femme people that were maybe not so used to being outwardly, like, aggressive, mm. being able to get on stage and just scream is a really, really awesome outlet, and no yeah. one can tell you that you're not allowed to, like, you know, knock over stands <laughs> and <laughs> stuff like that. But, yeah, I mean, like Ian said, punk is about, you know, it's I think it's less about the music and more about, like, the way that you act, the way that you go into the world, and just, you know, trying to do new things, support your community, support art. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I I just think it's like fun. I don't know. Totally. <laughs> I love that. That's a great answer. That's yeah. all you need, really. I don't. I like just being able to go on stage and just like, I don't know. I feel like I have autism, so uh, when I'm on stage, I just do like a lot of like stimming, but it like feels normal yeah. and feels like cool. That's a thing that is supposed to be happening. Right. Right. <laughs> best shows are when Faye like rolls around on the ground with her guitar. I've, I've actually seen it. I, I've seen I've seen your shows and I've seen that. That's part of the appeal. I love it. I love it. The first time I saw you guys, it was, it was at the whole music club um, for, for the Rock Out for Row awesome. uh, show. And I was actually going to leave at the beginning of your set. No, no, I, I wasn't. It wasn't because of you guys. Totally I fair. was just I was just on my way out and I caught I caught your first song and I was like, no, I need to stay for this. And then I saw the visuals and it was just great. So my question for you is. Um, I, I heard that you guys weren't really friends before you before you came together. How long did it kind of take for you to become comfortable, like thrashing around each other and like moving around and 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 being physical? You know, because you're a very physical group to to see in person. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, we started out in 2019, and um, COVID came shortly after that. So we took a pretty long time to get comfortable with our stage performance. Um, I'd say like a few years, honestly. Because in the beginning, we kind of had no spatial awareness. Uh -huh. And, I mean, I would come home with, like, bruises of, like, <laughs> bass guitar and stuff. You know? Just because, like, we weren't used to playing like that with each other. And I would, I've hit people with my bass before. It's not very fun. Well, it kind of, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I'd say, like, two years before we, like, really? actually got our stage presence locked in. Solid. 
Yeah, I mean, I would still say, like, now it's, like, really close calls. Maybe watching, it looks like Faye's going to hit me in the head with her guitar. I was, and yeah. Sometimes I, she does. Yeah. <laughs> but now it happens less. So, you know, yeah, I, I, would, I would agree with Hannah. <laughs> Progress. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you guys kind of sense each other, like, like, just on stage, what I've seen from you. Yeah, it's, I think there's a lot about, you know, music that can just, like, not... I don't know how to say this without like feeling really pretentious, but I think just Do like it. connecting people in a way that's very hard to describe Definitely. with words. Like there's just like something there and you can really, yeah. really uh, connect with each other while playing and with the people that are watching. Right. Yeah. yeah you're moving along the same wavelength. Exactly. That's why you don't bump into each other. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Okay. Um, so let's fast forward to your first release. We're dying. That was in uh, May of 2021. Mm -hmm. I believe uh, you released a single Daisy a month before that. Um, so you guys were together for a full two years before you released something. I mean, I, I saw that you put out some some demos, um, but official release, two years. Yeah. What was happening in those two years? Um, were you writing songs the whole time? Were you still doing covers for a little while? Fill me in on that. A mix of both. Um, we weren't playing live because of um, COVID and right. everything. But during that time, I'd say we were polishing up our songs that we have now released. And honestly, if you look back at like some old YouTube recordings of those songs, they like sound completely different because um, we kind of embellished them more. And we did write some new stuff and continue to play Babes in Toyland. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, it was definitely like perfecting the sound and, and trying to, to get used to... Um, playing playing as a group and then and then transferring that outwards and like Hannah said it's like stuff changes now still um you know I don't view the album as like a, a stamp like okay. this is I'm gonna play the song exactly like this because I'm always thinking about and I think everybody else is always thinking about like how can how can we take these songs that we've done before and continue to make them better and continue to improve upon them yeah awesome so what, what was happening with you guys during COVID? Um, obviously, you didn't play out much. Um, were you still getting together and developing your sound? Were you writing? Uh, how did you use that time in isolation? Yeah, honestly, it feels like so long ago, but I was just looking back at old videos of us in our practice space, all like masked up, kind of yeah. like away from each other and just practicing, I guess, which is good. I'm thinking back on it, but I'm like, what were we? Like, we were playing any shows. We were just kind of there. Yeah. Um, yeah, preparing to, to record an EP. I mean, doing some project stuff. Yeah, um, we also, during that time, developed our merch, which oh, cool. um, was pretty huge. Uh, did you want to talk about that? About the merch? The oh, yeah. <laughs> so that, that was a long process, and we've changed uh, for a while afterwards. So um, we, we originally thought about making shirts, but we wanted to make them, one, ethically and like kind of uh, cheaply as well because of course. <laughs> uh, we were all in high school at the time and we didn't have any money. Um, so I ended up building a, a really terrible screen printer out of plywood. It took me about six months. I did it for like three months and I took a break because I was like, I'm so tired of doing this. You, you built um, one? I built one, wow. yeah. And I used a handsaw too, like, like, a, wow. like a not smart person. Um, so I was, I was literally taking the plywood and I was hand sawing it and I was sweating and it was just like not fun. I love that um, though. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we would, we would print them, print them all ourselves for a while for a solid six months to a year. Um, and then it kind of just got, you know, we would, we would sell them out every time and we would take all this time printing shirts and not enough playing music that we, we uh, sourced it out locally instead. And yeah. Yeah. And when we were printing them too, uh, you know, we're not, we weren't professionals. We messed them up a lot, which to be fair, we did. We would sell the messed up ones, but yeah. we'd sell them for like half price, which people loved them. But then we were like, oh gosh. It's one of a kind. They're yeah. like, <laughs> then they were like $5 and we were like, hey, this is a lot of effort for us to like basically just give them away. Um, so yeah, now we, we print with a, a local printing shop, which, you know, I think we were able to play more and save up a little money to put aside to like do that. But it's still nice to support someone that's local and we yeah. know that they're you know, doing things ethically. Totally. Uh, who did the design for it? Kian. Cool. Kian. Visual artist as well as a musical yeah, artist. Yeah, also did our um, album cover. Cool. And does a lot of, like, poster art and doodles and such. Totally. 
<laughs> Great. All right. Um, well, so from the songs that we heard today, um, two of them I did not recognize, Hammer Song and Edina Boy. Is that from an upcoming project potentially or? Um, we've been, we haven't stopped writing music, I guess. Yeah. So ever since we released that, we just kept going on with, you know, writing more. Um, and we do, do have a good collection of songs that are probably ready for something else, you yeah. know? Um, but hopefully we can get another EP in the near future. Yeah. Yeah, it turns out we keep saying that we're going to record it and then we have other things and we don't do it. But the goal is to, yes. I mean, we have, yeah, probably a good like seven or eight-ish now that wow. we can get. Um, so once we record... <laughs> It'll be there, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's just about actually putting in the, the work to do it. Yeah. Are you playing these songs live right now? Some of them, yeah. There are a couple really new ones that we've been playing at our recent shows and we'll probably play at our cool. shows coming up. Great. What's the songwriting process like for you guys? Is it one person that brings an idea to the group? Is it a collaborative event? How, how does it go? Um, I would say I think we have a very collaborative songwriting process and I think every song is a little bit different. It kind of depends on, like, who has the, the starting idea. Like, mm -hmm. sometimes it's just one of us that wrote all of the parts and came in and was like, here's the song, I'll teach it to you guys, let's... And then, you know, we embellish upon it. Sometimes it's, oh, I have this bass riff, it's kind of cool, can yeah. we, like, do something with it? Or it's, you know, me coming in with lyrics and saying, Kian, do a drum part that sounds like this, and then making drum noises, and he has to figure it out. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I don't know, does anyone else have... Yeah, I think we're we're very collaborative with our songwriting. I like that every every song is a different process. Yeah, totally. Um, is it like lyrics first and then music, or because I feel like you guys are pretty lyrically driven. I think you have some definitely some messages in, in your songs. So it, honestly, it really depends on the song. Like sometimes it's Hannah and I coming in with our own lyrics uh -huh. um, and saying, "I have a vision for this song. This is kind of how I want it to sound." But sometimes it's like Faye just playing something for a while and Hannah and I flipping through our journals and being like, does this fit? Does this fit? Oh, cool. Um, so it's like kind of like a puzzle. You yeah, kind of yeah. Okay. Actually, the Hammer song, the first song we played today, um, Faye had written an acoustic guitar riff and I had written a song that I was going to do acoustically solo lyrics for. Mm. Um, and then one time we were just messing around and put them together. So both of them written for acoustic and cool. became a Rigby song. <laughs> What is what is Hammer Song about? If if I if I may ask, is yeah. Um, there's a little there's a story about. It. So uh, I was there was a situation that there was a person that was not very nice, and I was very angry about it. And I was talking to my mom. I was just like, like it just happened, and I was just really mad and kind of had nowhere to put that anger. And <laughs> my mom, I mean, not these words exactly, but basically was like went down to the basement, came back up with a hammer and was like, take this down by the river and like smash some things. Oh, cool. So I, I went down and I, I smashed some things. I carried my little, my little hammer in my backpack, um, like took the bus. I think I was like skating beforehand. Uh, so yeah, it's, that's, that's the kind of backstory. And then it came from there. Yeah. Cool. And you felt better after you smashed those things? A, a little bit better, at least for the moment. And then okay. had time to reflect. Yeah. Would recommend. Oh. Definitely a good process. And actually maybe look out for some things coming in the future it might tie into a, a bit really? of a project that we can't say too much about but Ooh, yeah exciting awesome um do you have any shows coming up that you guys want to talk about um i know that you just played at hook and ladder first of all how was that how was that experience at hook and ladder um that was so amazing it yeah. was like such a good bill um we played along with surly girly and riot girl darko oh, um, wow. yeah. two bands we've never played with or artists i should say um and it was just amazing. I think it might have actually sold out too, which was another cool thing for a Wednesday. Yeah, I think it was like the first time. Sorry, I think it was like the first time the Mission Room had sold out on a Wednesday. I'm not entirely sure, but like good for you guys. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, so much fun. It was. It was definitely weird because yeah, it 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 sold out. But I remember the last time we played that room at the hook and ladder there was like maybe 10 or 15 people so it was a weird juxtaposition of like oh we're gonna play this show this place it was like oh last time it was it was okay yeah there's yeah. there a couple people there and it was just like i walked into the room i came in late after work and i was like what why are there so many people here totally <laughs> um yeah and as far as upcoming shows we've got i think three in february um they're all house shows so um yeah, that's what we have going on in February. 
I don't know if we really have much else announced. We have a March show at the Treasury. That'll be really cool. cool. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't think yeah anything that's announced at the moment. Yeah. Okay, awesome, great. Well, so you guys are going on four years now. Is that isn't that weird? I mean, yeah. And you guys were so young when you when you came together. You were in high school, right? Yeah. That's that's incredible. <laughs> uh, props Thank to you, you guys. I mean, like it, it, I I did not know that uh, when I first saw you, but. Um, yeah, so I feel like you're kind of gaining traction right now, like a lot of traction. I see you on a lot of bills with some bigger names. It's very exciting. Um, and you're kind of part of this punk scene in Minneapolis that has, has existed for, for quite a while. Um, the, the Riot Girl kind of thing, um, which is, I mean, you're part of the history of, of um, let's see, of Kid and Forever, Babes in Toyland, those groups. Um, so how do you kind of reflect that that scene? And then what what new do you add to it? What, what's what's your flavor that you're adding? That's a really good question. <laughs> I feel like um, it's very important to look at the historic punk bands. Like we're all very influenced by Babes in Toyland. Replace I'm influenced by Husker Du and the Replacements. I'm sure they also have other great bands. And then um, I feel like uh, Scrunchies is kind of like a mentor band for yeah. us. So they all paved the way for us and as far as new things i feel like i'm not really sure what we offer that's new because it's just been, <laughs> been new music i guess but um i'd say probably youngness <laughs> i don't know well with that is new ideas and yeah that's what i'm trying to say yeah, like fresh totally. yeah i also i also think that like we all come like Definitely, like Hannah said, have those influences of the, you know, kind of uh, Riot Girl scene. But also there are so many other bands that I think we individually like. Okay. So I think that coming into it, too, like Faye is a big, like, or at least at one point, like King Gizzard fan. Ooh. Like, but also folk punk and like hand, some classic country, classic, like black flag punk, just kind of all over the place. So I think being able to bring all of that together maybe gives us something else. I think when we first started we were kind of just emulating that Riot Girl sound a little more. I mean, like, one of our songs, we realized it's, like, the same chord progression as one of the Babes in Toyland songs we would cover. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think as time's passed, we've been able to come outside and be like, no, we don't have to sit down and say, we're writing a Riot Girl song. We can just sit down and write our music and totally. then say, okay, this is Riot Girl or this is punk because we're loud and we have something to say. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, yeah. I also feel like uh, as a trans woman, there's not that many in like the Minneapolis scene. I, uh, especially when we were on tour and going into like Vancouver to see a bunch of like. You went to Vancouver? Yeah. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> we, we can talk about that in a second. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like the seeing the Vancouver scene. I don't. Know, I just remember that show we played with like a, like all of the bands. There were trans people. There were so many trans people at the like who attended at the audience. I just feel like, I don't know, that's kind of like a goal in my mind to turn the Minneapolis scene into that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> turn everyone trans. Yes, <laughs> turn everyone trans. It's the real trans agenda. It's real. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Cool. Uh, can we talk about the tour for a second? I Like, yeah. when was that, first of all? It was over the summer. Um, okay. Yeah, we started in, started here. We went up to Duluth. And then we went to Fargo and Grand Forks. And we did, like, the long drive through the Dakotas and Montana. And we went out to Seattle. We played in Portland um, and Everett right outside of Seattle. And then, yeah, we went up to Vancouver and then yeah. played in Olympia. And then we came back. Yeah, it was a, wow. it was a long one. <laughs> yeah. What's, what's your biggest takeaway from tour? Do you have any lessons learned from the road? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think when... Uh, when you hear people talking about tour it's like you're never prepared for it it's like and then you're in your head you're like ah, yeah this will yeah, be right. easy <laughs> this is gonna go fine and then they're completely correct yeah. and everything goes wrong and it's but i think there's a lot of growth that comes from that and a lot of understanding you know i've learned a lot about everybody in in the band and 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 a lot of things about myself too and i think you know the more that you're just around a group of people the more you learn about them and the more you learn about going across the country and and all of that stuff too it's, it's just a huge process definitely yeah and i mean i think kind of tying back to you asked earlier about us 
when we became friends. Mm-hmm. I think there's part of it too that like as much as we may have fought and had some had some tougher times when you're on the road together for two weeks, I think it it's a really good like bonding experience, like Kian said. And I think when you're playing music and really putting a lot of energy into something like this for so long for years it does become kind of like its own relationship like we're kind of like this little family unit yeah and so you know i think it's awesome that you know sometimes we can go out and have fun and just like be friends and sometimes we you know like bicker and fight like siblings and it it happens but i think it's definitely yeah like tour was that time to kind of yeah bring us together force us into a one car for so long <laughs> <laughs> so so you're better off for it then yeah it, okay. i think so Okay. Would you do it again? Would you go on tour again? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe not. Maybe not the long drive across Montana. Okay. Uh, yeah. What's your dream place to play? Like, what state and or other country would you want to play in? Oh. Yeah, I think New York is what we've always said. Okay. Um, would be really cool. Cool. Yeah. Great. Not for just just cause. <laughs> awesome. Would you take it international? Would Would Rigby go international or? International. Uh, I mean. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Canada count? Right. Vancouver guess, counts yeah, a little right. bit. I'm sorry. I, no. I'm discounting yeah. Canada. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, if I'm scared of taking our instruments on a plane and paying for pay- plane tickets, but yeah, yeah someone wants to <laughs> make that happen. We'll, if the demand is we'll there, be there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Um, okay. We're, we're, we're getting to time now. I'm just going to leave you with one more question. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to paint a scenario here. You have... Um, you have to create your dream bill to play on. It's gonna be you and three other bands. Oh, who, any who bands? You, any bands? Dead any, or alive? Dead or alive? Oh my god! At, ta- at any point, you, you can take a second to okay. discuss if you want. We have to come up with one answer as a group. Uh, we will. Okay. It's too. It'll yeah. take too long for us. Think to out loud too. Give Give the okay. people your your. Yeah, uh, definitely Babes in Toyland. I mean, that would be so cool. Okay. Um. Oh gosh. Putting you on the spot here. This is a little hard because we have so many different. I know what well, you have like, to. Who's the best? <laughs> yeah, we definitely discovered on tour that we some of us love people that the other people in the bands hate and do not like. So, um, oh gosh, this is really hard. I think I don't maybe Pat the Bunny. I feel like that would be a good choice. Okay. Oh. You got two slots filled then: <laughs> Babes in Toyland and Pat the Bunny, Rigby and. I don't know how you. I mean, I think I know how Faye feels about this. Amel and the Sniffers would be really cool. They, I think they're really cool live. Um, Final answer. <laughs> yeah. Wait, we have, and then we have one more. No, you are the, you are the, the one more. Oh, support. I'm the last one. Well, I don't know if yeah. that's final. Then does someone have a different? I don't know. <laughs> Who? Thermos. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our biggest influence. I mean, that's such a hard question. I say we go with that. Yeah. We'll okay. stick with that. Okay, give it to me. One through four. Who's opening? And then oh, yeah, we're definitely opening. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. There's that would be crazy to build like this bill of these huge bands. You guys are like, are yeah, you guys can open for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is fantasy land. You can do whatever you want. That is true. So. <laughs> yeah, I would still. I would be too anxious if we had to wait to play. I would want to play first and then just like listen to the other okay, bands. Yeah, fair, fair, fair. So, what do you say? Rigby's first. Rigby. Pat the Bunny. Pat the Bunny. Amel and first. Babes in Toyland headlining. Babes headlining. Yeah. Okay. That's a great show. What venue? What are you playing? Where are you playing? In the cities. The no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Kian doesn't know. In the cities? What's, what? I guess first Ev. I guess that's the yeah. only, only big answer. I mean, go ahead. I mean. Yeah, I also, I was at Cedar Cultural Center recently for a show, and that was really cool. I think if we're going to do something big, that could be a cool spot. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think everything comes to first half, really. My favorite place on tour was Under a Bridge in Portland. That would be so fun. All right, we'll go to Portland. In Minnesota, in the middle of winter. (laughs) Under I-94. So just just find us. (laughs) Mark your calendars, guys. (laughs) Mark your calendars for no date under uh, 94 somewhere. Yeah, we're not specifying where. You can just figure it out. Okay, (laughs) great. It's been set. That's awesome. That that sounds like a great bill. I I would go to that show, definitely. All right. Well, any last words for our Radio K listeners? Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. <laughs> We're Rigby. <laughs> okay, Rigby, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure. Loved seeing you guys live. 
Uh, we're going to kick it back to the booth now for some more local music until five. Thank you for tuning in today. This is Radio K, Real College Radio.